Wyatt Earp, gunfighter. But he also had connections, believe it or not, with Ireland and even closer connections with Lusk in North County Dublin. It's all to do with boxing. This is a fascinating story. The Jamaican boxing legend Hogan Kid Bassey versus Tommy Dennis, the hard-hitting man from Lusk in County Dublin. That was the top billing in Manchester back in the early 1950s when Lusk's proudest boxing son enjoyed what seemed like an unstoppable rise to to global fame. Hubert Murphy in the Fingal Independent looked back on the story of the Dennis family of Lusk, much loved and respected for their boxing prowess, their community work and their political involvement in Fingal. Michael was a long-time Lusk club stalwart, while Joe, all of these Dennises, played for 17 years with the Towers and the Portran team, collecting a junior, intermediate and senior championship medals along the way. Hubert's story began in Dunabate when Tommy Dennis was just nine years old. His two brothers, Michael and Joe, were already keen members of the Dunabate Boxing Club and they were not too anxious about allowing little Tommy enter the fight ring. I suppose he really sneaked in and he wasn't even four stone when he started, Joe Dennis later explained. But after just one week's training... Tommy Dennis's coach, Mr Waddington, entered him into the Dublin Championships and he won. He went on to win title after title, moving up about seven pounds each year until 1943 when he entered the heaviest eight stone class and was beaten in the county final. He came back to win the All-Ireland Juniors and Intermediate Flyweight title the next year, as well as losing in the senior final. Bantam White beckoned in 1945 and he was successful there too. Tommy's international career took off and he boxed 25 times for Ireland all over the world, ending with a total fight count of 246 from his amateur days, winning two thirds of them. He did a lot, Joe commented, his brother, he did a lot of his early training at home in Lusk, and I was a sparring partner. I was bigger than him, and I had to get down on my knees to spar with him. All the other lads in the club were not good enough to match him. When the Dunabay club disbanded, Tommy headed off to Rush for two seasons before a long association with the St Vincent's Club in Dublin. He spent his last year in the amateur ranks at Arbor Hill Boxing Club. Like his brothers, Tommy played with the Round Towers GAA Club in Lusk and that no doubt encouraged his great fitness for which he was well known and respected. Tommy's proudest moment came in 1945 in the National Stadium when he had three fights in the same night and he won each contest with a knockout. They say Tommy Dennis had it all. Speed, two reliable hands... And with a record of 77 knockouts in his career, who would dare argue with that? The Dennis story was quite unique. Ranked fourth in the world pro ranks from 52 to 54 at bantamweight and flyweight, he once gained a decision over former world bantamweight champion Dan Marino. He turned professional in 1948 and he was to box 72 times, mainly in Belfast and London, suffering just four defeats out of that 72 matches. Unfortunately, a serious work injury cut short Tommy's career at the age of 31 when it all seemed to be going so well. He would fight his way back to health, but his glory days in the ring were over. His brother Mick also suffered a bad back injury along the way and spent a long time every morning walking against the incoming tide in Rogerstown to make his recovery. The Dennis boys were no quitters. But that wasn't the end of the story by a long shot. The brothers Jack, Joe, Mick, Thomas and Desi were on their way home after competing in a boxing tournament in Dublin when a man approached the father and asked why his sons were so keen on boxing and how they were doing so well. Their father replied rather mysteriously that it must be in the blood. 
Later on, he expanded on that by telling the boys how their grandmother's sister married a Dundalk man named James Sharkey. Later, they had a son, Thomas, and the boxing bloodline was born. Thomas Joseph Sharkey, born in 1873, died in 1953, who became world famous and known as Tom or Sailor Sharkey, started his boxing career as a bare-knuckle brawler. He was born on the 26th of November, 1873, in Mill Street, Dundalk, County Loud, son of James Sharkey, a labourer, and Margaret Kelly. At age 21, he ran away from home and he found work on the Atlantic as a cabin boy. I'm sure you can imagine the life I was living, he reflected. Every single day out there was a fight, harder than any I encountered within the ropes. He spent a decade at sea, surviving hurricanes, typhoons and four shipwrecks. The last shipwreck resulted in three days starving in the Pacific before he was rescued. That's when he finally decided it was time to change his lifestyle, to say goodbye to being a cabin boy and to move on. Age 19, after a short period as a blacksmith, Tom Sharkey enlisted in the American Navy and shipped out to sea again aboard the USS Philadelphia. His professional boxing career began in Honolulu, Hawaii on St. Patrick's Day in 1893. According to his fight record, he went on to win his first 20 professional fights by knockouts over the next three years. He drew with gentleman Jim Corbett, a former world heavyweight champion, in a four-round contest on the 24th of June, 1896. And in August of the same year, he fought an exhibition bout of three one-minute rounds against the great John L. Sullivan, another former heavyweight champion of the world. On December 1896, the San Francisco Athletic Club sponsored a fight at the Mechanics Pavilion in San Francisco between Bob Fitzsimons and Tom Sharkey. Unable to find a referee, at the last minute they called on former lawman Wyatt Earp. The fight may have been the most anticipated fight in America that year, It had been billed as the heavyweight championship of the world as James J. Corbett had temporarily relinquished the crown due to injury. Fitzsimons was expected to win and bets flowed heavily his way. Earp, Wyatt Earp, entered the ring as the referee with his Colt 45 and he had to be disarmed for a start. He later said he forgot he was wearing it. Fitzsimons was taller and quicker than Sharkey and dominated the fight from the opening bell. In the eighth round, Fitzsimons hit Sharkey with his famous solar plexus punch, an uppercut under the heart that could render a man temporarily helpless. The punch caught Sharkey by surprise. He dropped like a sack of potatoes, clutching his groin, rolling on the, fa- on the canvas and screaming, Foul! The referee on the night... Wyatt Earp then stepped in, judged that the punch was illegal, that Sharkey had been on one knee when he was hit, and to everyone's disbelief, he declared Sharkey the winner on the spot. There was uproar with widespread allegations that Earp had been bribed, either by Sharkey's camp or by a major gambling syndicate. Sharkey's winning purse was held up by a court order obtained by Fitzsimons, but the judge eventually ruled in Sharkey's favour. The New York Herald ran a number of extremely critical stories about the fight for a whole month, challenging Wyatt Earp's integrity, questioning his honesty and thoroughly vilifying him, insisting he was either blind or a fool. They accused Earp of having a financial interest in the outcome of the fight and ran a damning cartoon with Earp handing Sharkey a bag with $10,000 in it. The adverse publicity seriously damaged Wyatt Earp's public reputation, but Tom Sharkey's boxing career went from strength to strength. Three years later, in November 1899, 
Sharkey got another shot at the world heavyweight boxing title. This time he lost to the then world champion Jim Jeffries in 25 rounds in a fight that is still regarded as being one of the greatest and toughest title matches of all time. In an epic encounter, Sharkey finished the fight with a broken nose, two cracked ribs and a left ear swollen to the size of a grapefruit. The fight was the first boxing contest ever to be filmed under artificial lights and the heat of the lights reputedly burned both men's bald heads. It was also the first championship fight filmed for motion pictures and the first indoor fight successfully filmed. The footage can still be seen uh, on the internet. Sharkey's record showed that he had 53 fights in all. He won 40, he drew 5 and he lost 8. All the fights that he won were on knockouts and he was never knocked out himself. He also fought the great Jack Johnson. After retiring from boxing, Sharkey operated a saloon and he worked as a night watchman and security guard. He died in Laguna Honda Hospital in San Francisco in 1953 and he's buried at Golden Gate National Cemetery in San Bruno in California. He was enshrined in the Boxing Hall of Fame at a ceremony at the Cantastas Upstate New York headquarters in June of 2003. On one of his regular trips back home, Tommy Dennis was honoured by the Irish Amateur Boxing Association at a function at the Garda Club for his services to the game in the late 1940s. So, did the Dennis boys from Lusk have some Tom Sharkey blood line running through their veins? Their father thought so. It was even said there was a physical resemblance with the former boxing giant, not in stature but in facial features. Whether it's provable or not, the Dennis boxing brothers, Jack, Joe, Mick, Thomas and Desi, will always be remembered in North County Dublin as great fighters and in Ireland. Great all-round sportsmen as perfect gentlemen and as sons of lusk that we will forever be proud to have known.